How's it going, guys? Welcome back to Dude Ranch DIY. Jake and Chris here. We are in the backyard here. And see this massive oak tree that we have in the backyard? Well, last night we've had some really big storms, really big winds. Am I right, Chris? Oh, yeah. Huge winds. Made me terrified of even the small trees <laughs> by my house. Yeah. And Sarah and I were sitting here. Uh, eating dinner and we have a skylight over off the kitchen over here and I can see these branches through the skylight and ever since we first came and looked at this house before we bought it I was like this tree really needs to be pruned it's a big beautiful oak by no means do I want to cut it down but we got to do some maintenance on it there's a lot of dead wood in it there's a lot of weight in it so I'm gonna go climb up Chris is gonna be down on the ground with the wood max chipper and the Kubota tractor chipping up everything and running the ropes and I'm going to be up in the tree making some cuts and we're going to be talking on our headsets here. And Chris is going to be giving me a little bit of guidance as far as aesthetics and how to, you know, thin out the tree from the ground. Because I want it to look good at the end of the day. It is in our own backyard. So uh, without much further talking, I'm going to climb up in the tree and we're going to get some things going here. Okay, guys, I'm just going to do a little voiceover here for certain parts because I got some good feedback on that from prior videos. I'm setting up my climbing system here, which consists of a micro pulley and an eye-to-eye, -eye, which is a short length of rope that provides friction to my main red climbing line. Chris just brought in the little IBC tote wood chip catcher, as well as the tractor and the Woodmax wood chipper, and I'm heading up in the tree. Now, the primary goal of this prune was to reduce weight towards the house, but it's also to improve aesthetics on the tree. I'm going to be removing suckers like you see me doing right here, which don't really provide any structural support for the tree. They just uh, come out and grow over time and fill the canopy with extra leaves that are unneeded. Um, I'm also going to be taking out dead wood and just thinning out the tree a bit to provide more airflow so it acts more like a soccer net instead of a sail um, because it is right over the house. So a big tree like this takes a lot of moving around. So you can see here, I'm climbing up a little bit higher into the canopy to get to where I need to go. Um, in just a little bit, I'll start making some larger cuts and we'll be on our way. All right guys, so here we are in the driveway and there's Jake all the way up in the tree. That's our big oak that we're pruning today. And uh, we figured we'd just show you a good before before he really makes any big cuts and uh, we'll get you a good after shot later. Really a beautiful tree. The limb that he's on now, he's gonna take back a little bit, raise it up over a lilac bush, and then up above his head, he's gonna remove most of that branch just to try to cut it back from the house, give it a little bit better shape. So what do you think? Right where I'm standing that droopy and then leave this next droopy. All right, uh, you wanna swing me this rope? All right guys, so I'm gonna be making this first cut here. Um, taking this one that droops down, um, cause that's like the lowest one over the house. So there goes our first major branch. Um, that one was particularly in the way and really overhanging the house pretty good. Um, this second one here is a lot smaller, but still goes out pretty far as you can see over our big garden bed and over the patio. So we're just reducing weight. Um, obviously not all cuts can be made with the chainsaw. Sometimes you can't quite get out as far as you'd like to with the chainsaw. So sometimes I got to use the big pole saw. Um, some cuts are easier than others with the pole saw, depending on the angle. But usually if you're able to move around pretty good, you can get a good angle that's comfortable and ergonomic for you to uh, make a good cut. So here I am on the rest of the limb, just taking those pieces as you just saw me make the cut. And I'm talking with Chris the whole time about different cuts to make and how it looks from the ground. 
uh, because it, it always looks different being up in the tree than it does from the ground. Headed back in towards the main trunk and I'll be heading up to the next highest rung of branches to start working on those. As you can see, they hang out really far out over the house um, and were definitely a big concern. All right, guys, so we're now way out on this limb. We were just down on that limb. You might be able to see a couple of the cuts. Um, so before I make these big cuts of the ones I'm standing on, I'm just gonna get some of this stuff with the pole saw up above me. So like I just mentioned, when you climb a tree, any tree really, but a tree of this size particularly where your goal is to take off a lot of weight and big branches, you kind of have to plan out and have a game plan in your head before you head up into the tree. Otherwise, you can kind of shoot yourself in the foot. Um, as I mentioned, I was using the branches that I was planning on cutting to stand on first as a platform to make cuts up above me with the pole saw. Um, because once you get up into the top, top of the canopy of the tree, um, it's not always quite as easy to get up to where to where you need to make the cuts with the chainsaw so sometimes you got to use lower branches laterally to go out on and uh, you know make cuts before make smaller cuts before you make the big major ones so right here I'm taking that big leader way back um, as you can see um, and you always want to take it back to a branch that's roughly 25 to 30 percent um, of the size you know of the cut that you're making um, you don't want to take it back to something that's really small because chances are it will eventually end up dying. Um, so here I'm just making my last few final pole saw cuts of little dead wood and stuff in that area. And we're gonna move on to the next section. You know what I'm saying? Lose this droopy one, take this whole thing that sticks way far out, and then leave this up right in front of me and just take that lower one. Okay, good. Let's do that because that's a lot easier. Uh, it should be in there somewhere. All right, guys, so here's the game plan. Um, as you can see, I got this piece tied off. I'm going to take it back to this upright right here that goes out. This one kind of droops way far over. And uh, I mean, you can see the skylight to the house. The next one we're gonna take is this big droopy one that droops way down. Um, and then we are going to take this entire branch that comes out right back to here. We're gonna leave that one going straight out and take this one. It's gonna reduce a lot of weight on this big leader of the tree that comes out over the house. That's what we're primarily concerned about. Um, so it's gonna open up the middle and kind of leave the sides um, filled in and and that should both look good and be functional for the type of pruning that we're doing here So Chris you ready on the ropes? All right, here we go weird I just sharpened it quick because I hit a rock at that job when I was slicing and dicing in the trailer my, the grapple grabbed all the brush but also grabbed a massive rock that looked like a stump so I just sharpened it real quick it it seemed like it was but I think there might be like a burr or something I don't know wait it's going on. <laughs> So you haven't been seeing me much on camera. You've been watching Jake all the way up in this tree. Down here on the ground. Keeping up with the brush as best I can. With the 
uh, Woodmax chipper. And uh, it's doing some good work. We're getting a lot of chip. It's got this uh, whole IBC tote recycling that uh, people want. They don't do that. Let's keep on watching Jake. He's more fun than what I'm doing. Okay, guys, so here I am about to tie off the next branch I'm about to take. And arborists typically use a bunch of different knots, but um, specifically for rigging down branches, I like to use what's called a Maro or a half hitch and then a running bowlin. So the half hitch is what I just tied, and now I'm doing the running bowlin. Um, so the running bowlin is basically just like a, a normal bowlin knot. You could kind of see it there with a loop at the end of it, and the tail end of the rope runs through it. So it acts. Um, as like the anchor and then the half hitch kind of acts as a choker so you can see I'm tightening down and cinching down the running bowlin and then right here cinching down the half hitch so that when the branch actually falls as you'll see the thing that bears most of the weight is actually the half hitch but um, the running bowlin keeps the tail end from slipping through so you kind of have a, a double safety there um, to prevent, you know, just in case the bark were to come off or in case the branch were really crispy and it decided to break in between the two, you kind of have two knots holding stuff there instead of just the one. So here I'm actually pulling up a second topping saw and going to swap with Chris because the one that I was using you could clearly see wasn't cutting all that well. I don't know if you overheard, but I had hit a rock on a previous job and just sharpened up the saw quickly, but uh, it wasn't quite cutting it, um, so to speak, pun intended. So swapping out for a different saw. So these next couple clips are just of me working my way around the tree. Um, as you can see here, most of these cuts and stuff that I'm making, I'm walking really far out on a lot of the limbs, um, which isn't always the easiest thing to do. Um, but you know it, it makes it a lot easier than trying to make the cuts with a pole saw from in closer to the trunk. Um, so it's just a matter of getting out there and getting comfortable and setting both my positioning lanyard and my rope um, and then you know I can go ahead and make the cuts but sometimes you got to get into some uncomfortable situations to get the job done and that's what I'm doing here especially because it's at my own house. Um, so enjoy these last couple clips and uh, I'll see you back down on the ground. All right, guys, I'm not quite sure where the GoPro ran out of power while I was up there, but um, luckily we had Chris on the ground, man in the other camera. Thank you very much. Not a problem. Always happy to help. <laughs> and Chris, uh, I don't, you could probably hear me talking to somebody. I wasn't just talking to myself. I was talking to Chris, and he was helping me, you know, make decisions on what cuts to make for aesthetics, for sunlight, for weight reduction, for safety, and stuff like that. Because sometimes even though I'm up in the tree or the climber's up in the tree, you know, you're, you're hyper-focused on what's directly in front of you and you lose the, you know, the All grand, the yeah, the big picture of the tree. So he kept stepping back, going down to the driveway, walking all around um, and looking at the tree. I think it looks pretty good. Let me show you what we got going on. So to the untrained eye, it might not look 
all that much different. Now keep in mind, we did not do this leader right here yet. We did this leader and the top of the tree and going back that way a little bit. So we still basically have this big leader coming out and then the big leader going back over like the tractor and the shelter logic. But um, you might be able to tell it looks a lot thinner, um, a lot less overhang coming over the house. If we walk perpendicular, you know, to the edge of the tree now, we are uh, not, you know, really overhanging the house that much, just maybe some of the tips. Now this tree is a mighty big, I believe it's a black oak tree, um, very strong. Um, I mean, it's survived God knows how many years. Um, so this thing was doing fine all on its own, but we'd just like to save it and, uh, you know, give it some help here. So, um, you know, standing from here, you can really see the difference on this side versus this side as far as, you know, how thick it is. Um, so Chris has to unfortunately get going. Um, he's going on a little trip with his fiance for the weekend and I am not going to be climbing a tree of this size or magnitude by myself. It's just not safe, it's pretty stupid. So um, we are going to save the other half of the tree for the next, next time. But uh, as you can see here, Woodmax chipper filled up this toe to chips, absolutely no problem. How'd the chipper do, Chris? Oh, the chipper did wonderfully. I don't know if you put new blades on them or touched them up, but this whole setup with the IBC tote to catch the chips and be able to move them wherever you want them is, you know, the next level. You, you don't really think about it in the moment, but if you're standing here dragging brush all the way across the property, chipping it to where you want it, rather than, you know, taking 15 steps here, it makes a big difference at the end of the day when your dog tired and you just want a beer. Right, exactly, which is what I am right now. But to Chris's point, I mean, he could have parked the tractor over there by the edge of the woods and then over here by the edge of the woods, but I don't really want chips over there. I, I have spots where I do want chips and having this little thing is pretty convenient. I mean, we could try and get the pickup truck back here or something, but it would be tough and it would tear up the lawn this time of year. So overall, great setup, Woodmax, keep doing what you're doing. Highly recommend these products. So I got some cleanup to do um, over the next couple days here picking up this wood and stuff. Um, I'll probably, a lot of this stuff, you know, I could split into firewood, but it's kind of knotty and uh, angled weird and stuff. So I'll probably just save it for when I have the big chipper here and send it through, make a nice little pile. Um, so that's that. But for now, guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. Chris just dropped his big monkey stick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we're tired, we're ready for, I'm ready for some water and maybe and then a beer or something, but I am parched. I haven't climbed, done like a working prune like this in quite some time. This is a big tree to move around in. Um, again, thank you for the help. Not a problem. Appreciate it. Um, if you guys like the video, give us a big thumbs up. Haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button down below. Questions, comments, wow, we are in sync. Oh yeah. <laughs> Questions, comments, or feedback, <laughs> put it down in the comments section below. But for now, I'm Jake. And I'm Chris. This is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. We'll see you here next time.